Hey, what's up, you sexy bitches, and welcome back to this week's Weekly D. And today I have the awesome Jordan Kensley on. Listen, if you want an opinion on something and you want someone to be brutally honest with you, you always know that you can ask Jordan Kensley to give you the answer. So this is the Weekly D, because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least begin it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any and you want some tea, then come and join Dan up on the Weekly D. It's the Weekly D. Hey Jordan, thank you for joining me on my podcast. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's really nice to be able to have a little catch up with you. When was the last time we even saw each other? I can't remember. <laughs> Pre-COVID for sure. And le- yeah, except well, I stalk I- you on the internet always, but <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent pre-COVID. I'm trying to think of what if, was a. Did you were you at um was it the World Pole Festival in the UK? Maybe did you come for that? Was it that one? Yes, I I did come for that. I think in yes. 2018, 2018 oh, I was there. So I know that feels like that's six years ago, ago now. I know that's, that's just crazy. We have, and then I think before that, I was in the US because I remember coming to see you at work in the evening at the um, what was that something? What was that? Was it uh, Jumbo's was that Clown Room? Jumbo's. That's it. I was going to say Yumbo's, but I was like, no, it's not Yumbo. Yay! Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same. Are you, are you still working there? No, 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 no. I'm not allowed to talk about that either. <laughs> oh no! Is it? Um, is it still open? Yes. Oh, shame. <laughs> it's it's so more it's just I don't like the owner and if the ownership could change to something, you know, less shitty, which when will that ever happen in a strip club? Then it would be great again, but until then. For sure. Say lobby. <laughs> so before we get started talking about the the topics that we've already pre-discussed, um I just want you to give like a little heads up to everyone who is listening to this who maybe have never encountered Jordan Kensley before. So just give them like a little bio on who you are, what you do, where you come from, all the things. Um I am a Gemini Aquarius Sagittarius. Um, (laughs) if you're in LA that matters and anywhere else you're like what the fuck are you talking about Uh, so I guess like a quick recap of my life in poll and if you want pre-poll I can give you pre-poll but that life is weird Uh, I found pole dancing in like 2011-2012 a friend of mine who used to work at NECA and is also a, a stripper was like oh my god look at this video and it was the craziest shit I've ever seen I think we stalked like Janine Butterfly and Felix Kane and like this was when like an Iron X would have been the craziest or like that iguana back walk down that she did that Janine did during dog days we're like what the fuck is happening and I was hooked um but at the time there were no studios where I was living Tucson Arizona which there are now studios here which is great and so I just started stripping instead plus that's like growing up in the Midwest that's just where I thought that happened anyway and I was like well this is cool and I'm gonna do it um and then it turns out I'm really good at stripping and uh I graduated college got a job offer in LA moved there was working my job and then also found uh the studio section there um technically pole expo the very first one would have been my first like pole community experience so started my i count my pole journey as like the very first pole expo in 2012 and then moved to la maybe two months after that and then started performing that following january for pole shows had been stripping the whole time um at jumbos and then went pro by 2014 so like a year and a half later because i'm obsessed (laughs) and at that point it was the only way to do anything or get on stage or like perform in general outside of a club environment so i i think one year i competed in six or seven competitions uh placed in all of them surprisingly (laughs) and started touring in 2015 and never stopped and then until covid made me (laughs) right and then here we are I want to come back to something you just said, because you were like, oh, there was no pole studios here in Arizona. And you said, mm-hmm. here. Are you there now? I am. So... You're not in LA COVID anymore? Was, no, COVID was crazy for me. And on top of, like, 
all of it, uh, we had signed a new lease with my landlord. So we were already paying like something like $2,800 a month for a two bedroom, one bath oh. in LA. Um, and it was a standalone home. So like really great price. We definitely snuck in. She did not know what she had. But then co- like two weeks prior to COVID, we, we were on month to month. So we signed another three year lease, but she upped our rent by $500. So at that point, it would have been like 3200 a month. And I was in Bali when COVID hit, ready to go on a whole three month tour. Ended up getting stuck for two weeks because all the borders closed. Finally made it home and was like, hey, I... We can't afford this increase in rent right now, but I can continue paying what we were paying. I'm set for that. Can we prorate this lease to next year? And our landlord was like, yeah, not a problem. Well, the next year came and we live just outside of LA City. So the county that we live in uh, lifted their rental moratorium and she hit us with an $8,000 pay or quit where we owed her. So basically we owed her back rent for the $500 a month that we weren't paying, that we had all agreed to start a year later, but she hit us with an, an eight grand check be, or an eight grand, grand invoice being like, you owe me this money for rent you didn't pay and you either have to pay it or you have to vacate the property. So Thanks, you chose LA. to vacate. So we, uh, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have the eight grand. It was literally our security deposit. So we just gave up the security deposit and I was lucky enough, again, that weird life that I lived pre poll I got mauled by a dog, had to sue the owner. And uh, it was also during the 2008 housing crisis in the U.S. So I ended up buying a condo so I could get in-state tuition, so I could finish my college degree because I was there on scholarship. Um, and I couldn't stay for it. I couldn't afford $75,000 for like an additional year to finish my final classes because I couldn't use my right arm life. Um, so... Part of the way that we were able to stay in LA was that I had a renter here as well. And this renter also ended up leaving the same month we got hit with the pay or quit. So it just made sense to move back into property I already owned. And now there's studios here and and there's a bit of a community and it's much calmer than Los Angeles. So I'm actually really enjoying it. Oh, so you own the place. You own the place in Arizona already. (laughs) And then when you moved to LA, you rented it out or something, did you? Mm Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, I had a oh, okay. contract with one of the like one of the companies here. Uh, there's a huge military base in Tucson for the Air Force, and so I rented it out to Raytheon, basically, and they would just shove right. people in here, whoever was working for them at the time. And, and now it's just us in here. <laughs> I was going to say, your boyfriend is he from <clears throat> Tucson, Arizona, or is he from LA and moved with you? No, uh, well, we met in LA, so he ended up coming with me. He loves me, Uh, but we're both from the Midwest and he's actually in film and TV. So he's been driving back and forth from here to LA since we moved in 2021. Wait, hold on. So how long does it take to drive? (laughs) Eight hours, six to eight hours, depending on when you hit LA traffic. Oh, wow. So he'll literally just go there, stay for the week kind of thing and then come back. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Because we love money. (laughs) Yeah. Because we have to pay our bills, boo. Yeah. (laughs) I know. Oh, that's cool, though. Life. So tell me about um, how the COVID life was for you. Like, because I remember, um, because we've we've always noted before this, just to talk about, you know, things that have been going on. I said, oh, I just wanted to ask you about how COVID was. And you were like, oh, sensitive subject. You were like, but I want to talk about it. So tell me, what's the story? Yeah, so... I've been tra- like, I don't know how to bring this up because to me, it's, it's one of those things where like when you have anxiety, it's like, oh, everybody has problems. No one cares about your problems. Stop talking about yourself. And also these are really depressing subjects. So like, why would you reach out on a social media platform? Like it's one of those weird things, but I'm grateful for the platform to talk about it because a lot happened. And uh, I think it kind of explains why I just fell off the grid for a little bit. Um, first, <clears throat> In 20, 2019, I was in a head-on collision, and it t- I had a slap tear in my, le- my left labrum. So after spending years and thousands and thousands of dollars making sure that I didn't tear my fucking shoulder out from pole, some asshole just decided to ram into my car and ruined my shoulder anyway. So <clears throat> started getting depressed. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Clearly, my body doesn't want to talk about this, um, and neither does my head phone. <laughs> Everything that could go wrong is just going wrong for you right now. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. Your clothes okay. are going to just like, start falling off or something next. Something crazy is going to happen. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. So, yeah. Uh, so, I was in a car accident, and... Uh, 
I made the mistake of listening to medical professionals who don't really understand what the hell I do. And so I stopped pole dancing. I lost a lot of weight. In December, I got cleared that I didn't need surgery and I was able to go back into dancing. And then uh, I did a tour in Brazil. I, I had that tour in Bali that was supposed to kick off three months. Then COVID happened. And I just like went downhill from there because I realized in COVID when everyone was transferring to online platforms that I had a pretty... Uh, severe brain injury actually so I had a concussion and in regular life it doesn't super affect me and I have ADHD and all those things so like oh I forgot a word like that was just normal and uh during COVID when we were going to online platforms not only did I recognize that my body wasn't capable of doing the extensive amount of working out that I had grown used to but I also wasn't able to keep my memory straight so like I'd be teaching a class online and because I didn't have a person in front of me to bounce off of I would like my brain would just swipe in the middle of me talking and I would forget where I was I'd forget how I got there and I forget what I was talking about <clears throat> or I'd forget my own choreo in the middle of class and I'd just get into the song and I'd start freestyling and then like I'd look over and there'd be a camera and I'd be like oh shit I totally forgot that I was in the middle of class so even now when I'm teaching, like I just got done teaching workshops at Positive Spin, which you were a host. No, not a host. I was the host and you were a sponsor for and I was so thrilled to see your name. Side note. Oh, was this, um, is this Pull, just pull for Justice. There? Yes. yes. It I was so just fun. got the email come through about the person who won the prize. So that's cool. Oh, it was, it was honestly a really good show. Um, and it was, it was great. We can talk about that later if you want, but it was great. And I love seeing your name. I think I spent five minutes talking about you. Aww, <laughs> it's like, I know Dan you. Rosen. <laughs> um, so, but even still, when I teach workshops, once my heart gets to like a specific elevated rate, I'll start forgetting things again. So that was really frustrating, coupled with like muscle loss. So I, my body didn't look the same. I had lost it at that point, uh, almost 20 pounds. And I was not super heavy to begin with. I was between like maxing between 124, 128. Um, and then to drop to like 104, 107 was like huge on my body. And then on top of all of that, in a one year time span, I lost 13 people that I knew all around the world to suicide during COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And then we moved and then we got hit with a pair quit. So we lost our home and then we moved here and like a year after moving here, not only did we lose multiple grandparents in our families, but we also lost my soul cat last last summer. And it, and then we just lost our favorite grandmother um, on Tom's side. And so it's just been like a lot of consistent Love loss lost. and a lot of grief and a lot of trying to figure out, am I just like, am I just depressive or am uh, do I have depression now? And like trying to figure out what else could go wrong and like, how can I even compete? And then watching the industry and having to struggle with this concept of like, well, not only did I come in at, at a point where sexy style was not really accepted predominantly and I had actively been told no to many opportunities because I performed in heels even though my workshops weren't taught in heels. And so now watching everybody, it's like this weird concept of like, well, am I just the, the old generation that won't let go so that I can let this new generation come in? And what do I even have to offer that's not already being offered when I watch people? And like, I've, I've seen people who've taken my workshops and now they're straight up like, I found people who use my workshop names like from years ago and I'm like, that's fine. Like I don't teach that anymore, but it's weird to like, okay, do, do I still fit in this, here? <laughs> but this is, this is a really funny subject actually, because you know, you were saying about her like back, you know, when you were kind of a big name in that industry, but it wasn't the thing at the time back then it was, everyone was crazy about tricks, weren't they? And now that it's coming mm -hmm. around and everyone's really back in sexy and you were like, you know, do I, step aside and make a, a make a room for these new names or should I really take this opportunity that I should have been given back in the day I feel like there are a lot of people who used to do heels I wouldn't like to use the word bitter but they're bitter I'm joking. <laughs> they're like, no, I don't use the word bitter I feel like they feel like they've been really done wrong and, and I understand it would be the equivalent of me being really big on tricks and something and them not being really popular and then five years down the line they do become popular but no one wants to learn from me 
anymore because there's new people who have just joined the industry doing tricks as well and they'll be like mm -hmm. fuckers i've been doing this way before they fucking were do you, like do you think there's something in that like because i feel like i can i feel the passive aggressiveness sometimes that comes across from some people for sure that's not aimed at you by the way but you know there are people oh, who, have, who have done like heels for years who are very much like oh well oh great that you now enjoy it but honey i've been doing this for fucking years and like catch the fuck up do you know what i mean do you feel there's any element of that going around oh absolutely and i can't i don't blame any of them either like oh my airpod what tom i hate your pods <laughs> sorry guys. you know what it is because you know what it is because they're your boyfriends he's probably just got like different like size ears or something so they're just too loose have, um... or too big much bigger head than I do. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's like walking away now. It's too, too funny. Um, yes, I do feel like there is definitely resentment there and I don't blame them. I don't know if you remember what years ago that would have been like 2017 when this exact scenario happened before COVID, which I think we should separate pre-COVID sexy style from post-COVID sexy style because there's a huge shift in how we're finding each other I think in like post COVID so pre COVID it would have been like what the the Eastern European crew came out of nowhere and like just blew everyone away with what heel like what was possible in heels even for those of us who were technically like doing something similar to that style already uh, it it changed the game and you can't you can't deny that and what it did is and this is where I, I think I've found my own piece with it is my goal as a sexy style instructor has always been just to get people comfortable in their own skin with this part of the human experience. And, and most of my workshops, especially the performance ones are based on sexy is whatever the audience that you're in front of thinks it is. It's whatever you think it is. So half the time, I'm not going to go into a USPSF competition and do a sexy style routine. That's not the audience for it. So of course I'm not going to be like accepted. And if that means that I'm like, that's what I believe, then all of these new people coming in, like I want them to find sexy. And I want my friends who weren't comfortable five, 10 years ago doing that, who are now like glowing the fuck up in the industry and like huge names currently in terms of their choreography and their tech technical style and and all of these things, like, I want that for my friends. I've wanted that for my friends, and I want that for my students. It just sucks that, like, I'm being left behind because I wasn't accepted from the start. And there are people in the industry now who've actively talked shit to my face about me and my style, saying that, well, you don't even do anything except roll around and touch yourself because you're a sexy style dancer. It, how is it that hard? And now that, that like those same people are actively sexy style dancers and teaching on platforms and getting tons of followers and like all of these things. And so in that way, it's like really just a recognition I think would be nice, but who's like you've still put in the work so why am i recognizing someone i didn't learn from just because you've been doing it longer like there's mm -hmm. you know i can see both sides but it, it comes back to like just the lack of respect that the community as a whole has shown the sexy side of pole because of its association with strippers and even still in the sexy style of things we're still actively separating from sex work but we're just using terminology now instead like edge work is literally just jellyfish feet or floppy ankles. I don't know. Like you've been around long enough. Like that's been a sexy stripper thing since forever. We've never called it edge work. It's always just been like, Oh yeah, you do floppy ankles. Look at these flops. Wow. You know, but now it's edge work. Now it's technique. Now it's something that's that we can break down, oh, which is oh God, great. Hold on. I need, to, I need <laughs> to know from your point of view as someone who's done heels for a long time, I need to know what's your view on edge work. Be honest, please don't lie. Yeah, so um, I'm not a fan. It's kind I'm, of like I, a... I've been and I've been open about it. I've been very open about it. I, like great for people who do it. It's not for me at all. I don't really like the way it looks. Great for people who love it, but for me, oh, it just does. I don't like the aesthetic of it. Yeah, so my personal preference on my body is I'll only do it for floor work because I really like the way that it like. 
I mean, you've seen Anne Marie Davies do this shit and it's like unparalleled. And I still haven't seen anybody pull out some floppy ankles or, or edge work the way that she does. So that's like, <laughs> no questions there. I don't think anybody's really up to standard compared to the shit that I've seen from people who've been doing it for longer than three years. But in terms of the community as a whole, um, there are definitely dancers that have made that their style and i think when they do it it's really intricate and sexy but for my own personal style it's it comes from a club that's not supposed to be the whole thing it's just supposed to be an accent in the same way that you'd get really fucking bored if i heel clacked the entire three minutes of a song um so i'm not gonna ever like oh don't learn that because it's still technique and it's still something that's going to expand your movement repertoire and also it's for safety purposes, but in terms of a technicalized style, mm. probably won't be anything that I personally teach. Right. Yeah, I just... And I've been doing it long this, enough, so I the, don't Yeah, it's this that's a fit for me. I'm just like, like oh, I just... I, I just love a nice line. I've always loved a nice line anyway, you know. I do like a floppy angle, though, which is funny, which which isn't technically classed as edge work, I don't think. I think edge work is supposed to be when you're stood up. But it's that whole thing of, like, I've always liked a floppy angle because I still think you can have a nice line and a, and a sickled foot, but it's the it's this, you know, when, like, flexing and then, like, dragging the heel and I'm like, oh, no, I just don't like it. It's just not for me. That, and that's okay, I think. It's pretty extreme, yeah. Well, but that's, again, like, you're not the audience for that movement, right? Right. So. Oh, I can appreciate <laughs> it. That's the difference. Yeah. I can appreciate it. There are a few mm. people who do it better for me than others. You know, I really love the way that um, Pulp Fiction does it. So, you know, I, <gasps> yes. I, I told her that. I really love her style. and I, lo I like the way she plays mm -hmm. with it. I like that. But then on other people, I don't feel like it looks as nice. But it's just a personal preference, isn't it? It's no offense to them, of course. I still think they're amazing. It's just I don't like the way that looks on them. But to, going well, back to what you were saying about, for, like... versus ballet, the, right? Sorry, keep well, going. exactly. Yeah, for sure. But like going back to what we were saying about, you know, do you feel that there are people within the, the heel side that are a little bit like, you know, I, we, we use a word in the UK called irks. Like if you're irked about something, you're just like a bit pissed about something. Like, like, do you feel there's people who are a little bit pissed about how it has turned out and how a style that they've been doing for a very long time is now, now that it's big, rather than booking you they're booking these people who are maybe just better on instagram i mean what's your thoughts on that because i feel like you know some well, of these kids these fucking kids they're good on fucking instagram and tiktok that's what it is and i will not hear anything else about it if you're not good on instagram that's you know. yeah so that's why i have to separate between pre-covid and post-covid is because post-covid social media became where it became our competition stage right? Whereas before you had to go and perform or go and compete in the place that you wanted to tour. And now people know who you are and now you can tour for those of us who are not Marlo, you know, <laughs> anyone yeah. and, and so, yeah, I definitely, I, I can definitely see it. I, I don't blame them. I've been a judge on competitions. No, why? Where, old school has been a category or it's sexy style and the and for me the clear winner is the stripper style person and this is all pre-covid and you'd think that i had lost my fucking mind suggesting that to the other judges because well they didn't do anything that hard and now you take a sexy style workshop class that's old school formed and you're like oh wow actually this shit is really hard because you're going so fucking slow and you have to look so fucking fluid that now there's respect for that style but if you put a sexy, like a stripper style or old school flow style on stage pre-COVID, not a chance would you even fucking place. And I've been the judge on enough competitions to know that even when you have a judge who's actively rooting for you, it's not going to happen. Even when the whole competition has been reorganized and restructured so that it's pro-sex work and the point isn't tricks, you'll still have the, trick, the trickier person win because it tends to be the atmosphere for what you're doing. If you're on a competition stage, sit, like slow flow isn't the goal. And that's because that style wasn't created to be, it's not the, the right club environment. That is a hustle club style. You know, like I'm showing you exactly what you can pay for. I'm showing you exactly how flexible I can be. 
And then I'm going to hustle you for a thousand dollars when I get off, but I'm not going to be wasting my time on stage doing crazy tricks and hard shit. Even though all of the shit is really hard to look well, but like compared to hard style stuff, that's exhausting. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time doing that unless I'm in like a stage based or like a stage oriented club atmosphere in terms of sexy style. And unfortunately most performance stages and competition stages are a stage based atmosphere. So it makes sense that you have a lot of people pre COVID who are super pissed that they've been doing it for a long time and they still can't get booked when you have old school as a whole damn ass category now and you're claiming it as this new thing which it's clearly not and it's just it's it goes back to like not respecting the culture that it's from and not respecting the people that originated it or the people like me who've been pushing boundaries and trying to get like our foot in the door to other versions of the same community and still being held back because God forbid we be any what any any association with sex work at all or heels but in do general. You think, but do you think that it's because the styles are different? Like because I do see it as completely different. Like old school flow style is definitely not a style that I do. It's not I'm no good at it at all. I'm very much into the Eastern <laughs> European style, that sort of technique kind of really hard, like on the like the tip of like your heel and stuff like really kind of technical the sort of stuff that you would never do in a club because you'd never have the energy to do that before me or night it'd be crazy <laughs> that's kind of the style that i like because it doesn't require the sexy side and i don't really like dancing sexy for me but i like doing the technique kind of russian style that type of thing do you think that the you know the people do respect it but maybe they just enjoy doing a different style of it because i feel like you know, I'm going to be really honest with you. I've seen a lot of, you know, stripper style pole dancers who do get really pissed off about people who are doing heels now. But the people they're getting pissed off at aren't doing the same style as them. They're doing more Russian style. No one does that in, in clubs. So it's completely different. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So in, in the US, what, what has happened is a lot of pole dancers post COVID and, and post the internet showcasing how amazing sex work can be and how much money you can make. We actually do have a lot of uh, Eastern European hard style people who come into the club and they get hired because they do really cool tricks during their audition and they have no idea how to hustle. So now you're just in the club expecting to make money because you think it's easy and you have no idea that that's not even a style that's worth anything here. So there, as like a U.S. perspective, there is a disrespect in terms of like the club environment and what you think you can accomplish here just because you do tricks. But that has not changed in my opinion. It's just grown exponentially like everything else has. It's always been there. Pole dancer coming in and thinking that they know better because they do tricks and, and we don't because not the fucking place. But in terms of what you're going for, in terms of like just feeling bitter when you're not even doing the same style, um, I agree with you. I do think people are bitter, but that's one of those things, right? Where it's like, well, what are you getting mad about? And, and that's why I've kind of been personally taking a step back. Cause I wanted to figure it out. Cause it made me mad too. And what made me mad is that there's no reason other than their Instagram following, which is a one minute curated post like that's, that doesn't make you a good performer. That doesn't make you a good teacher in the same way that pre COVID com being a great competitor didn't make you a good judge and being a good judge and a great competitor didn't make you a good teacher. And being a good mm. teacher doesn't mean that you're not a good performer, but it, you didn't necessarily have to be, you know? And I think with the huge wave of social media and that being our only way to connect to each other, it's just brought in a new wave of of generation and, and realistically, like what was the goal pre COVID or what was the goal 10 years ago? And my thought process is that it was to get everybody comfortable in their own fucking body. And going back to what you said before about, you don't find, uh, like Eastern European styles, sexy, like hard style isn't quote unquote sexy to you. It's just technical. I would argue that powerful women are sexy and that's why you yeah. have like whole sex of BDSM and, uh, 
like power dynamic play and things like that, because that is a form of power and people find power sexy, which is what we find Mm. sexy about confidence. And that's what I've been trying with my workshops from the beginning to showcase is like, cause coming from a, a Middle Eastern family in the middle of nowhere, fucking Midwest, red state U S like I grew up not thinking I was attractive because I was told I wasn't and thinking that I was fat because I was told I like my worth was based on that. And like at one point, uh, I remember telling my dad, like, Hey, you're, fr- I'm a teen, a preteen and your friends who are in their forties are making me uncomfortable with the things they're saying. Can you ask them to stop? And my dad was straight up like, why would I do that? That's a compliment to me because that's his attitude. So mm. then moving away from that, and moving to the West Coast and just finally, like, and working in a club was the first time that I was like, oh, actually, everything that I've been taught societally is a big fat lie. And I'm exactly perfect in the way that I am. And someone will pay for me. And if that's what we value in a capitalistic society, whether it's my body or my technique and style, that's where we find like, that's what we're moving towards. I'm going to do whatever I need yeah. to, to make money. I do agree with you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, when I say it's not sexy, I mean, yeah, of course, it's still sexy. It's, not it's still it's still quite a sexy style. Right, yeah. It's not over. It's just, I think it's so much more, it's so much more technically based. And I just, I then went through a stage online, and I just had to just sit back and just let people just get on with it, because it really has nothing to do with me, and I had just have nothing to say on it, and I don't want to get into arguments. But, you know, when you see, I saw people like, oh, you know, arguing with people like, well, you know, honey, we've been doing this for years, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, you haven't. This, this Eastern European style was so new at the time. No one was really doing it. So when people were like, oh, we'll catch up, honey, we've been doing this in the clubs. We're like, no, they have not. Like, no, they have not. Why have you been, why have you not been dancing it then online or in your workshops? Because no, I'd never seen anything like it before. And it was just a bit like, and I felt like that's where the business came from. It was like, you know, if people had been teaching the same style that, that they do, like the flow, the sensual style, the, the stripper style, you know, that's what I like to call it. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I consider stripper style. If people had been getting famous off of that, I'd understand it maybe a little bit more. But it's one of those things. I just, I just hate getting involved in the arguments anyway. But it's just crazy how many separations it really caused because it, and it yep. still does. Hey, so sorry to interrupt your podcast. I just wanted to hop on really quickly and just tell you about one of our new sponsors for this week's podcast. And it is Hustler Heels. Look at these. If you are watching on YouTube or you've got Spotify and you can see the video, look how gorgeous these amazing heels are. Hustler Heels are a very new brand. And if you know Grip and Glow, it's owned by the same person. So you know you're going to get good quality and you're going to get a really good customer service. But how cute are these heels? Like, I've not seen heels that look like this. The detail on them is amazing. The back with the lace and stuff is just so pretty. So I definitely recommend you just go and check out Hustler Heels. You can check them out on hustlerheels.co.uk. They've got lots of different designs, and they're coming out with lots of new ones too. So definitely a brand you need to check out. And with all these amazing heel brands that we have now, we're just going to see the quality getting better and better. And that's so evident in these heels because the quality of them is just amazing. It's literally perfect. It's just so beautiful. Like the detailing on these is just gorgeous. So if you haven't already, get on your phone, go onto the internet, go and check out hustleheels.co.uk. Let's get back to the episode. When do you, I want to ask you a question and, um, like, when I'll do try you to think, answer it directly. Yeah. Like, I felt like there was, there is a stage and even still now is a stage where, you know, the stripper community and the stripper style community were really anti pole because the pole community were so anti stripper at one point. I agree. I don't think they were doing it intentionally. I think they unintentionally were doing it. And then all of a sudden it became a popular thing. And then the stripper community were like, Oh, now you like it. Well, you know, you better respect where it came from, blah, blah, blah. When do you think, do you think the stripper style community are ever going to forgive the pole community? Cause I don't feel like they ever will because I feel like it's always, uh, Oh, like I always see people whenever they're arguing, like, "Oh, you look like the type of person that uses hashtag not a stripper." And I'm just like, I wonder when this like feud will ever just like end. Do you think it ever will? No, 
But I don't think yeah, it's because we our communities. I don't think it's because our communities can't blend better. I think it's because like, oh, this. I'm so sorry. We live in a capitalistic society globally. It's just the, it's just the facts. And until our basic needs are met with like, let's say a basic income so that we are not creating art for the sake of creating money and we're not working in whatever environment for the sake of creating money, the money is where we have to fight each other. If I'm getting the credit and the money that I need to survive, or if I'm just getting the money I need to survive, half the fucking world would not be at their jobs right now because we wouldn't want to. We would just want to live our lives creating whatever art we would, and there wouldn't be the same kind of, well, you're taking something from me because there wouldn't be the same internalized struggle to survive that there is right now, especially post-COVID. So that's right. my societal viewpoint. My very smaller, much smaller community viewpoint is that we're always going to have people who think who just haven't dealt with whatever childhood trauma that has impacted how they move in the world. And so like how they move in the world is thinking that they're owed something or thinking that something's been taken from them or thinking that they deserve this regardless of where it came from and they're doing something new. I mean, we still have like, I'm going to blast them. I don't care. Lou Bitpole literally just posted an article by a certified anthropologist, which correct me if I'm wrong, but even in Eastern European and the UK, that's a doctorate degree or nothing, right? Like, so tell me how you're certified, first of all, but sure. And the post was literally like, Molokom and Chinese pole have been around for years and that's where all of this started. And then we're only going to name two major players in the pole community that I won't name right now, uh, who have been actively like terrible to the sex worker community and actively hashtag not a stripper throughout most of their careers. And then, uh, bear and only mention strippers when you're met, like talking about JLo and Cardi B, like that's not, that's not it. That's not it. And to sit here and say that, like, this is the history of pole dance as we know it is incorrect because the history of pole dance is sex work and sex workers. And however we got there is fine. We can agree to disagree because it's different in each environment, in each country, in each area. Um, but it can't, what we we're dancing on a sex worker pole. We're dancing on a stripper pole. We are wearing the minimal amount of clothing because of the pole that we're dancing on. And there is a huge influence post 2010 from the Chinese pole community, the Malakam pole community. You can see it in the tricks that we do, but having an influence from those communities does not mean we were born from them. And Correct, the yeah. idea, and it's so an like influence, when you still but have, it's not the origination of it. Origination? Yes, and so when is you still have, <laughs> it is now because it it fits yeah, perfectly it whether sense. it's real or not. And so when you still have major companies that are huge in our community who are still pushing this net, like this incorrect and misinformation in terms of the history of poll, like that's not. Why would I trust the poll community when that. this is still Yeah, right? I'm really surprised by that because I, I, I literally, I've spoken to the owner of, um, like, uh, Lupit Poll, and he's very nice. He doesn't seem like this. Again, it might just be someone in their marketing, you know, their marketing team who just didn't think, you know. But I assume people uh, probably went on there to tell them. Am I correct? Oh, at least two of us did. And we got the same auto response from them being like, sorry that your feelings are hurt. Um, but this person is certified. So, <laughs> okay. And you can, if you really care about strippers, like watch this debate with whatever podcast we're doing. I'm trying not to name all the people that they've, they've named in this response, but like, <laughs> like watch this debate. Okay. So not only are you still calling it a debate, which is misinformation again, but you're also going to sit here and tell me that I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Cause I'm not certified as if I haven't done research as if blogger on the poll hasn't done actual doctoral research on this. Like as if this hasn't already been discussed for years. We've already come to a general conclusion. Do you not think it's because, <laughs> like, especially uh, more so from a maybe from Lupit's point of view as a company, I feel like many people try to whitewash it because 
it's a, like you said, we're in a capitalistic world where money, is, like cash is king. People want to make money. And they know that if they try to gymnastic wash pole and be like, you know, oh, this is very much gymnastics, blah, blah, this is nothing to do with sex, but the people will then come in. Do you know what I mean? They think it will maybe bring more people in. It's so funny though, because I don't know about you, but like in my studio for sure, people love the taboo aspect. They love the like, oh, I'm going pole dancing. Like, so for me, I would never like, I would never want to be like, oh, this is, we only do pole sports here. Never. Because I don't want people thinking that because we certainly do not. But also because it loses also the people who, you know, I know want to come because it is a bit of a like taboo. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So if this, if this company was a studio, I could understand that perspective, especially like location wise if you're in the middle of the country in america and you try to go this is a slut style gym <laughs> insta backlash how dare you uh so I, I again i understand and i recognize the need for this storyline so to speak or this prom like mm. this marketing technique but when your whole business is just to sell polls like you could have written that article and still given credit to the influence of malakam and chinese poll and discussed more the 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 idea that poll isn't a style and that's why we have so many different varying styles of methodologies that come in from other movements and still accurately credited how we got here instead of here's Malakam, here's Chinese poll, here's all the other things that have nothing to do with sex work, and then here's like two sentences that credit J-Lo and Cardi B. Cool. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really tough one. Like, you know, like when you get, I know, a totally random thing to, to say, but you know how you get people who think the earth is round and then the people who think the earth is flat? You know how it's just like, the people who know that it's round, they just think the flat earthers are a bit crazy and they just let them get on with their shit. But I feel like with this argument, it always, it never does that. It always causes this big, big drama. I just, I don't know about you, but I get really bored of it now. I just, oh, I can't yeah, I'm kind even of indulge. I can't even indulge in the conversation anymore because I just, you know, when people like, especially because we get it a lot on poll lulls, like where people are like, oh, well, you know, actually like it was all inspired by Malakam. Like, yeah, sure. That Superman that you're seeing on the poll, it was definitely inspired by that, you know, 60 millimeter wooden pole. <laughs> when have you ever seen someone doing that? I was like, yeah, sure. I'm sure the Hello Boys and the, you know, the Violator were, were created by some Indian child on a fucking wooden pole. Oh, shut up, Karen. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's exactly it, right? And I think that's why it's still uh, a hot button topic is because realistically, Malakam and Chinese Pole are both culturally male dominant. And not only are they male dominant, but they only allowed women in the last decade or so. So like mm. only recently were, if you're at a traditional gym, are you even allowed to enter that as someone who has boobs, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So to credit men, basically, for a style of m movement that comes from women is like, that would be like if, well, be belly dancing is from martial arts. And you're like, what? No, it's not. How is that even this? No, it's martial arts. It's from men. And you're like, how is that the same? That's People not. And I think that's why there's... the tummies and it made our tummies move like this. <laughs> and that's how belly dancing was created. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. It's like people will take any opportunity to turn something into what they want it to. But I feel like that is more... The, you're so funny because you will, I, I don't know if you ever notice this, like I'll go to events and everyone will agree. Like everyone will be like talking about something and everyone respects each other's opinions and stuff, but put it on social media and oh my God, it just, it creates a whirlwind. Like, you know, what, yeah. how have you dealt with like, um, you know, how do you deal with like managing your mental health and and all these crazy arguments on social media because I do notice that you do partake and um, I just want to know what sort of toll, what toll that takes because it must fucking take a toll on your mental health. Yeah, so I, have not, I, I will be the first to say that I have not always handled these conversations or these arguments very well. I, again, going back to like fix your childhood bullshit, one of my childhood things is that I learned very early on that if I'm louder 
then I win. <laughs> right. So definitely had to start like taking a step back. And that, that started for me in COVID after like I had lost so many people and then also my home. And then I just like, I didn't have the energy anymore. And, but like the reason I think I still involve myself in these arguments or these conversations is because for me, it's a learning experience. Like I, I've definitely, you can look back on my career and I have not been the, the best ally because I didn't know what that meant in terms of what I know now. And I was a decent ally for the times in the same way that like, Oh, the 1990s, the 1960s and watch this video and how dare they. And it's like, yeah, but at the time that was totally fine and acceptable. And the goal is that we just keep go like we do better as we go. That's the whole point of learning, right? You can't know what you don't know until you know it. And yeah, so a lot of times I enter those conversations being like, look, I, I'm pretty decent at words. It's the one thing I'm good at. <laughs> um, in terms of like going to school, like words were my only thing, not math, definitely not math. I can count to 20. <laughs> That's it. Um, but words are words and like arguing points are what I'm, what I feel like I'm pretty good at. And I've definitely like crossed lines that I would not cross now myself with people and, and trying to get my point across and going like from zero to a hundred way too fast. I've definitely done that. And that's where I think people create the dichotomy of like, Hey, I want to learn, but now I'm too scared to learn. And so that's right. kind of the well, reason I'm still uh, in. Yeah. I, I feel like I, so many of us got to that place with the heels debate, with the Black Lives Matter debate. It was, mm -hmm. what do we say? How do I ask these questions without getting into trouble? You know, there's been times where I've done the same and I've asked questions and people, rather than helping me, have just like attacked me. So now I don't yeah, ask. Yeah, how, how dare you didn't learn. Right. It's like, oh... You know, people will be like, you need to learn about like this or whatever. And then, and then you'll be like, oh, okay, well, what about this? And they'll be like, do your research. You know, it's just like, well, hold on. Well, I could do that. But then what if it comes up saying, because what if I look online, it comes up saying varying responses. Like, how do I, mm -hmm. how do I know what's a credible source? And the problem is, is yep. that with so many of these things, it's all down to what the person writing it feels like. And it can be varying for different people. But yeah, I just, yep. the internet for me, like I, I'm the same. I've definitely more so through the pandemic. I realized what a toll arguing on the internet has on my mental health i just i genuinely there was a time i mean and i've talked about this many times before where you know if a business did something that i didn't like oh my god i was the first one to be posting on social media to be like bitch yeah. look at what these people are doing blah 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 and then what you've got to remember is that it doesn't matter what your opinion is. You could literally, and I've seen it, where people will go on and be like, oh, so-and-so was raped by so by this person, blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, well, maybe, maybe she asked for it. And they'll be like, how are there people in this world that can say that opinion, but there'll always be someone who disagrees with you? Always. It, it just, you could do yep. the worst thing in the world. I could murder you and someone would be like, well, maybe Jordan provoked him. <laughs> and this is I the probably did. The <laughs> probably. But you know when you're just like, probably. it doesn't matter what you're talking about on the internet. It doesn't matter how right you know you are. Someone, mm -hmm. somewhere will disagree with you. And I just realized that and I've just decided that, what's the point? Uh, what's the point? I don't even argue back anymore because it's not yep. worth it. What's the point? Where, where are we going to go from here? No one wins on the internet. And I just feel like face to face, you can have more of an understanding. But yeah, um, but, uh, that's something I feel like I could talk about for hours because I just find social yeah. media so toxic in that sense. I just hate it. Well, I think in, in terms of like what I've learned moving forward is that I try not to call out individuals and I try to call out businesses. And pre COVID and during the height of like when we were all super arguing online, because there was nothing else to do because we were all stuck in our homes. Uh, I was calling out both individuals and businesses. And I felt, and like moving through that, it was kind of like, well, the in, in the same way that with climate change, like individuals can only make so much of an impact. But when you have the mon the monetary backing of a business, that's what really makes an impact. And so with things like this article by Lupit Poll, which I've had similar experiences with them, and I, I wouldn't have expected this article from them. And so to then see that and then get that response being like, 
hey, what the hell is this? And then that's how they respond. Like, that's something that I'll call out. Or Mm. when, like, there are still, there are studios here that are, thankfully, why my headphones, that are thankfully still closed, um, or now closed. But at one point, like, during COVID, they went on, they went off on one of their black students and still managed to have a studio after post like super anti BLM. The owner came out as being pro cop. The, like they raged out and like uh, super inappropriate towards one of their black students and then uh, used their studio to basically exploit their students into, well, come try on being a stripper at this studio showcase, but you have to pay us to be in it. You have to pay the DJ that we hire. You have to pay for our security, um, but you can get tips. I'm sorry, this is a studio showcase or are you trying to be a club right now? Like that exploitative nature right. is something that I'll always call out because not only are you a business, but you're also exploiting people or you're exploiting the history to make monetary income. And I'm not a fan of that. But in terms of individuals, like your life is your own. And if this isn't important for you to learn, then like that's not my... I'm not going to waste my time trying to teach you. And if you want to come to me and ask questions, I'm always happy to have conversations. And I get a lot of questions still on the internet, like, Hey, or or even when I posted about the, this article, it was like, well, I can see what they're talking about. And I just don't want you to come off as like, you're whatever, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but sorry, I don't mean to be rude. And I'm like, Oh, I don't take, I don't, I don't take this as rude. I take this as you care just as as much as I do about whatever your opinion is. And that's what, like, I'd rather have people that care about something than people who are just like, this doesn't affect me at all. So I'm not even involved in it when really it, it all affects all of us. Like if it's, if it's a poll community topic, it affects us all. And if you have any questions, then you should be able to ask them. I just think the problem that we have is that people, you know, they voice their opinions, which is fine, but it's almost like, you know, if we were in a room together, like we are now, we're, we're, you know, we're talking, right, exactly, that they're, they're making it like, well, this is my opinion, and you better fucking agree with it, because if not, you are going to be cancelled, or, you know, your opinion is wrong, but why, it's just so sad that, you know, we could talk, like, and be like, well, I think this, you think this, great, that's okay, let's mm-hmm. carry on, you know what Feeling, I mean, like, feelings aren't facts. Correct. And that's what it comes down there to. There are lines. There are lines for things like that. I, I always yes. say to people, if you're going to be homophobic, racist, but all these things, definitely that doesn't count. But, you know, like, for example, if we were talking about, you know, something to do with poll and we didn't agree with it or whatever, I'm not going to argue well, with you about work. it. Edge edge work. Work. Right. That's a style. Oh, that's your I'm personal not preference. Fall out. Right, I'm not going to fall out with someone because I don't like edge work. It's just my preference, that's all. You know, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, it's funny actually. Do you remember when, and actually I'd be really intrigued to know your opinion on this. Because, and again, I love Marlo, love her to death. And I saw her, it was something, I can't remember. I remember reading and just thinking, mm, I don't know if I agree with that. But okay, cool. I take it on board. I think it's a really interesting read. When she posted about, um, it was like something point supremacy or something like that. Toe point supremacy, was it? Do you remember? Yes. It? And it was about yes. like the yes. origin of it and stuff. And I was like, uh, oh. I was like, but you know, I asked my students to point my toes purely because I just like the way it looks better. And I was like, okay, interesting read. Don't agree with it. But that's cool. But there were people who were disagreeing with her. And then other people were like, oh, well, then you're this and you're, and it was like, why can't we just agree to the fact that some people agree with it and some people don't? What's wrong with that? I don't mm-hmm. understand. But um, it's just, Ugh, I just I think that's the internet. Do you not think it's, it is a lot? A, it's a little bit the internet, and it's a little bit like deep rooted issues that go far back beyond our generations. Like if, right. and I think America is actually like a really great place to show this because our systems of everything are super fucked. Um, like our education system is not the same from state to state, you know. And so when you have things like po- like toe point supremacy and the idea that the ballet body is the best body like there were years that even in poll that's what we were looking for when contemporary was king and in reality the only thing that needs to happen is that you need to be active through your entire leg like you're not going to look at Yvonne Smink and be like how dare you because she's incredible but you can also see that that's an active line through her whole leg she's actively making a choice to either flex or point when it's happening and in well, terms of like you say that but execution people do, people do go to <gasps> no they don't 
Oh my god, they do all the time. She posts about it a lot. People will always go to Yvonne's page and be like, why are your feet flexed? Oh, like, you know, I wish you'd point your toes. And she'd be like, why do people not understand that this is like, there's a difference, you know? This isn't, the, this is the style I like. Like, I like to intentionally flex. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's weird. That's, that's so cruel. Like, get the fuck out of here with that. So that's, Okay, so this is actually on topic for the topic that I did want to discuss, which is that pole is not a style. Um, in terms of a step around is a dip turn is a 360 spin. The technical aspect of what needs to be, happen to keep you safe is the same regardless of what you call it, regardless of how you stylize it. Now I can take a dip turn and go straight up onto Releve and extend that outside leg as far away from me as possible and really showcase a ballet stylized version of this technique. Or I can drop down to my knees. I can keep my feet flexed. I can do a really deep squatted dip turn. That's the same fucking technique, regardless of how I stylize it. So in the same way that like, you can look at Yvonne Smink and her technique is stunning, regardless of what style she chooses to execute the technique on. And I think that's that also goes back to the conversation of why are people so mad about this different style when they're not even doing it? And it has like, I, and I agree, like, why are you mad about this? It's just a different execution style. The technique is the same. So why are you so, being yeah, shitty about, you, <laughs> about you where this comes me. from? When, when you talked about it, I was, I was trying to understand what you meant because you said about, I wrote it down as well. You were talking about like stylized instructions. Were you talking about mm -hmm. like, um, like, cause, cause I've heard about this. I've heard about, um, I hope she doesn't mind me saying her name. I'm sure she won't, but like she does talk about it publicly. Like Carmine Black talks about it a lot. Um, where mm -hmm. she'll talk about like people stealing her damn it, what is it she calls it? Is it cues? Stealing her cues. Oh, something like that. It was like it wasn't like, so for example, like I, I and this is why I wanted to double check if this is what you were talking about, because you know, people saying that people are sort of stealing their their cues on something. I was and I remember saying to someone but like I don't really understand, like surely if you're gonna teach a step around, it doesn't matter how you teach it, it's still a step around. No one owns that. But what they then explained well, to me was that no, yeah. it's like it's not the actual step around, it's the it's the, you know, when when people are teaching like sexy style and they're like, right, <clears> I want you to I want you to take yourself into a room and there's like this vinyl floor and I'm pouring oil on the floor and you're slipping and sliding. What does that look like in your body? And things like that. And apparently they were talking about things like that. So is this what you're talking about, or are you talking about something completely different? Um, it's kind of both, but I tend to focus more on the physical execution of it than the actual cueing of things. But in terms of that, that type of cueing, that's just therapeutic cueing as a side note. Right. That's, that's okay. just like, that is also, you took someone else's, an outside non-movement style methodology of discussion and you pull, you brought it into pole. You brought hip hop. You have that execution style. You brought that into pole. You like you're Dmitry Politov. You have b boy background. You brought that into pole. But the backflip that you're doing is a backflip, is a backflip, is a backflip. And how you execute it versus how I execute it is where the style difference is coming into play. What I see this most often in, in terms of physical execution, would be things like edge work, where you're talking about heel technique, but the technique that you're teaching is stylized technique not basic technique does that make more sense yeah so are you trying to say that people are trying to claim something that already exists it's just you've added a different style to the technique is that what you're trying to say yes or that this is correct correct technique and when in reality correct technique is are you hurting yourself or not are you able correct. to support the oh load God, that you're that. doing Right. And so that's the, that's, that's more the, the issue that I currently have is that we, we see these people and I, I follow predominantly sexy style pole dancers. So I see it most often in heel technique classes where we're going to focus on combinations to learn this 
technique when it's really to learn how to execute this style. And there is cueing that needs to happen in order to find that style in the same way that I wouldn't expect the same cueing if I took a ballet class versus a hip hop class. But both of those two movements are just stylized technique, which is why in those forms there is a quote unquote ballet body because this natural body type is more geared to this execution style. But it doesn't make my body any less capable of doing it. I just don't execute it the same way that they're looking for. But that's also why we have so many people who are attracted to pole because you can come and do whatever the fuck you want. And as long as you're not hurting yourself, you're doing it great. That's your fucking solo. Kill it meet us later. Like we'll, we'll wrap up as a group, you know, but, but realistically you can do and execute however the fuck you want. And as long as you're not hurting yourself and as long as your body can support the, like the weight transfer or the load of dropping up and down and like all these crazy tricks that you may or may not be doing, then you're doing proper technique because our bodies should physically be able to support all of those different aspects of moving and stylizing your performance or stylizing your personal movement does not mean that that's technique. It means that it's stylized movement that you're cueing to get this style of movement. It doesn't mean that the technique right. of a step around is any different. Does that make more sense? So do you, do you have a problem with that in, in the U S thing? Cause I don't really necessarily see much of that. Not in Europe anyway, where people are like, Oh, this is correct technique. If you're doing it any other way, it's wrong kind of thing. Do you get people say that in the U S then? <laughs> yes, but also <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm glad that it's not so much that it's, that it's wrong. It's more that there's no clarification. And so if I'm a baby puller and I don't know any better and my instructor has told me to point my toes my entire minimal career, then I'm going to assume that anyone who's not is doing it wrong. Like what happens Correct. with Yvonne. And so I think that's where the issue is, is that you're as an instructor and as a studio or as a community, like we need to start recognizing that style doesn't necessarily mean right or wrong. And that's where I think, again, going all the way back to, well, people are still pissed about this. There's no right or wrong way to be sexy. So you I can't well, like, you can't claim anyone else is sexy just because they're not moving how you find attractive. I think as well, like, you're such a product of what you're brought up around, not only in life and in the studio, really. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're brought up in a studio for two, three years where they tell you, point your toes, point your toes, point your toes, you're always going to find, like, oh, got to make sure my toes pointed. And if you see someone dancing without their toes pointed, you'll be like, oh, why not point your toes? And my teacher always tells me to point my toes. But you've got two types of people. You've got the types of people that are like, oh... You're not pointing your toes. That looks kind of weird. I like it. Like, and you got the people that are like, mm -hmm. no, that's the wrong way. So yeah, it's it's funny. We've we've gotten into a real habit of people feeling that you know, especially if it's being said by someone with a big voice or a big name. They're like, well, they said this, so it must be right. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, no, not necessarily. They're mm -hmm. just giving their opinion. It's like Marlo with the Marlo article. I don't think at any point she was saying. This is 100% what everyone needs to believe. And if you don't, mm -hmm. you're wrong. You know, I think she was just saying, you know, yeah. this is my research. Here, here, what are your thoughts? I think she even yeah. said on there, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know if you've got any articles you can refer me to, to, to look into this more. She always wants to learn. And I love that. And, you know, it's like with the edge work thing. I wasn't going to poo-poo it and be like, no, it's wrong. I just, because it, it's not wrong. There isn't really a right or wrong, you know. It's more just a case that yep. it wasn't a style for me. But props yep. to people who are doing it, because it looks fucking hard. Like, I did try mm -hmm. a couple little bits just to see how hard it was. And fucking me, it's so hard. Like, it just, there's no way I can make it look good. So, yeah, and I think it, I always say to students, like, whenever students are like, oh, um, you know, I was taught to do twisted grip first, for example, like handsprings. I was taught to do twisted grip first. I'm like, well, it's wrong, not because they've, you know, told you to do twisted grip first. It's wrong because it's bad for you and your shoulders. Like, uh, uh, until you're not, you get the uh, strength, yep. Until you got the strength. Like, if you can hold yourself in a true grip, then maybe your shoulders will be strong enough to hold you in a twisted grip too. But, you know, technically, it's probably not the best thing for you to learn first. You know, is it wrong? 
Not necessarily, but is it good for you? No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I always try to explain the difference to them because there was a time back in the day where I used to be like, no, it's wrong just because it's wrong. I didn't really understand why it was wrong, but I just, I knew it was wrong because I'd always been told, never do Twisted Grit first, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, but I know, I just, the industry is, I don't know if you agree with this, like the industry is such a mess. Do you know what I think? It's just such a mess <laughs> nowadays. It's all over the place. Like we are just not yeah. united at all. Like we are so, we've got like, groups of people like you've got the stripper style polars who are very anti the eastern european style polars sometimes not all the time and then you've got the pole tricksters who are like oh pole sports needs to be in the olympics blah, blah, blah. you've got the people who just want to do it as a fucking hobby and don't want to be involved in the drama and it's just it's become weird because i when i started doing yeah. pole in 2008 I'd never experienced a community like it where everyone just loved yeah. each other and we, we all jammed and it was so fun. I, I remember my first pole expo. You must have been in it as well. Yes. And I remember thinking like, this is so fun. But then the separation started happening. Then groups didn't like each other anymore. I actually think that's probably one of the reasons why pole expo doesn't even happen anymore because, you know, Fornia got her enemies, didn't she, for, for all sorts of different reasons. And people just separated off. And... Yeah, I feel like that's really the reason why we've got so many events and why not all of them do really well, because rather than being a united industry and having just a few big events, we have loads of little events for the small, you know, separated communities. And I just, it's really sad because it's not the industry that I signed up for, I have to say. I don't know about you. No, I feel similarly. Like, And, and I do recognize that like as a student who then became a teacher, there was a change of culture between what the student population witnesses versus what the instructor population witnesses, because we have a lot more to deal with. Like we're dealing directly with management. We're dealing with, we have to fill our classes. Like now it's not my hobby. This is my job. And now I have to compete for funds. And so that's, and now like in a post, I would say 2015 world, which is when I feel like that, that dissolution of community kind of started when I guess when Instagram kind of started becoming a bigger tool of, of marketing than before. And then you started getting people who like now credit is a really big deal. Whereas before I don't think credit fucking mattered. We were all under the, like we were all just learning off of YouTube videos or learning from each other at pole jams. And like there wasn't even a way to credit each other, except if we were teaching it later and that's like the end of it. Otherwise, thank you for this trick. And I, now it's in my body and I do it. Yeah. You do you know, know what? Or I, I don't know if you saw the post um, by Indie, uh, Indie Pole. Um, I think Indie Pole where maybe post or something like this it was like how to properly credit and stuff and it was saying to people like you shouldn't be saying inspired by if you've literally taken the same move and you should be saying um mm -hmm. copied from and i'm like are we really at that point are we where we're gonna where we're gonna pick at people on how they credit someone mm -hmm. be fucking grateful for the fact that they're even crediting at all because there's many people who don't so many people who don't fucking bother and and you know exactly who they've taken something off because it looks exactly the same as someone who's just recently posted it and you're like, well, I know who they took it off. I just know. Yep. But they've not tagged. Yep. And, like, we should be worrying more about those people not giving any credit where it's due. Like, rather than focusing on the, the wording, like, oh, that really bugged me. I remember being like, I did a post that day and I was like, Oh, trick copied from Paul Nick, not inspired by because I did exactly the same move as him. And I've been told that if I got a copy, I need to say that I copied and I didn't, I wasn't inspired by them. It's just that like, oh, come on. It's so stupid. Like, leave it. Just let people say what they want. If they want to say I was, I was, you know, I don't know. I can't think of another word, but you know, another word in the like, I was mesmerized by Jordan to do this move. What? Let them say it. So they, they tag right. me, it's going to make me feel good. And if they, and if I made them feel good by learning this move off me, good for them. Fucking thank you for tagging me. I feel great now that you tagged me. Right. So I've actually <laughs> I've been on the other end of, of you, like your story where and this is so funny because I'm not going to name names because this person is popular. Do it. Uh, <laughs> no. And <laughs> I, won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Maybe before, in the before I'm like, time. I'm like, name them. Name them. In, 
in the before times, but not now. I, I'm in therapy now. You can tell now, me all so... to it. You can tell no. me all to it. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. <laughs> so, so this person, um, what they do? So this person was in my class at Beast Bun, and... We and I literally taught them how to do aerial body waves. They posted a video with me in the background, clearly cueing them on doing body waves. And then they tagged, influenced by three people who aren't even at the studio that we were at because they wanted the attention of those three people. And didn't tag me at all literally in the video clearly cueing them clearly watching clearly in the background doing teacher pose you know like i'm clearly pumping this person up because they're in my class doing the thing i didn't get credited at all i didn't get named at all and so i've been dealing with this for many many moons and it's also like one of again my childhood triggers of like not like of people, people don't feel like I'm important enough or I'm not like high up enough to, to give credit or like for whatever reason, this has been an issue in my life consistently, even outside of pole, like in the horse community, blah, 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 blah. Shmeow. So for me, the way that I view it is as an instructor and as a teacher, my whole goal is for you to be better than me. Like, and, and if once I teach you this movement, it's your, it's in your body, it's your body, it's your movement. I don't own this move and I don't even own the cues for the move. If you're a teacher and you take my class and then you take my cues, oh my God, does that mean that my cues worked for you? And then that means it will work for someone else. And as a teacher, that is my whole fucking point of existing is like, I want you to be better than me. I want you to surpass me. I want you to go to other teachers so that you don't look like a replica of me. Like that's for me what the, my goal is. The thing is <laughs> it's that whole thing of it's like it's okay. It's okay to tag those other people and be like, I really wanted to learn mm -hmm. this move because I saw so and so and so though doing it. But thank yep. you, Jordan Kenzie, for your amazing cues that I got it straight away. Blah. You don't have yes. to say inspired by Jordan Kenzie because maybe it wasn't. No. Maybe they'd seen someone else do it and then they asked you. But it's just mm -hmm. I just think credit where credit is due is so important. Because Oh, I love as it. Teachers, Teachers, we give our everything. I know I do. I give them my heart and my soul. Yep. I really do. I go out of my way to make them the best pole dance they can be. So when not when they don't tag me, it makes me feel unvalued. I think that's the issue. It makes yes. me feel like they don't value the effort that I've gone to 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 help them. You know, I try not to take it so yes. personally now, but I would definitely say. Yeah, it's one of my I definitely took triggers. it personally. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. God for therapy. Oh my god! Um, I, I started therapy during the pandemic actually because um, I just really needed it. I went through a really hard time also during the pandemic, and uh, therapy it was great for me in that sense. And you know, it really taught me about because I didn't really realize actually how much of a trigger my my childhood was. But you know, when, especially when you've been bullied as a kid, like anything like that's actually. Yep. 100% all the times I've ever trolled people online or called people out or, you know, put posts up and be like, the summer so did this, let's cancel them, blah, blah, blah. This is 100% come from me being bullied as a child and saying, I ain't going to fucking yep. let you bully me as an adult, bitch. And actually realizing that yep. no one was bullying me and I didn't really need to get involved and I could have just moved on from it and let them be messy. It's fine. But yeah, our therapy. Guys, go to therapy. Me and Jordan, Don't get me and Jordan That's endorsing. <laughs> Pole dance is not therapy. Go get real therapy. <laughs> oh my God, yes. D please, please, it's okay to talk to your instructors. I love having my students, but guys, I'm not a therapist. Just remember that. If I tell you to go and burn your ex's house down, this is not professional advice. <laughs> I'm petty. I will be on your side to destroy the person. You do that. You get it, girl. Like, fuck that bitch up. Meet her in the parking lot. But if you want me to be there, um, I'm going to have to talk to my therapist first and see if that's going to yeah. be like a healthy environment for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, listen, I, if you want my advice, my advice is to be petty and do never forgive that person because of what, you know what I mean? Like a therapist would never give you the same advice as I'm going to give you. So please do not listen to me. But if you want to listen to me, be ready to have your life ruined <laughs> right yes 
So yeah. I also like I love credit. So my only my thing is, um, especially now that I'm not teaching regular classes, because I do as an as a studio owner, I think there's a different level for you than there is for me as just someone who instructs at other people's studios. You know, like if I'm just teaching a regular weekly class, then for me, these aren't my specialty tricks. These are tricks that I just believe that you should know. And that I want you to know well enough, these are base movements to combo later or to do whatever later, like put this in your routine later, but this is not a workshop. So I don't, I don't feel like I need the same credit, but when you own a studio and you're the main instructor of that studio, not only are you helping me as an instructor, but you're helping my studio. This is a review. Like that's what that is. And I don't think people realize that in terms of like how they're crediting and what they're crediting and when they're crediting and all these things is like, this helps me get money. You posting that you took my workshops and enjoyed it. That's how I continue teaching workshops, especially being a shadow band as I am. Like I haven't what posted in a year and I'm still like, you can't have, like you can't look up my name as a hashtag because it goes against community standards. Like <laughs> cool. Like, the only way I'm getting Yay. seen is by people who aren't shadow bands. Like all you new young bloods that came post Instagram being like, fine, we'll free the nipple sort of. <laughs> <laughs> are you wearing a thong? I guess that counts, you know, like whereas before I've gotten to, I got kicked off of TikTok in four videos, banned in four videos. I was fully clothed in all of them. Wow. Cool. So funny, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really have any problems with TikTok. It's and I, again, this is where I think like, actually in some ways it sounds terrible. Shouldn't really find it funny, but I think being a man is so different. They don't attack men. It really like, is. Whole dancing no. men. But then I, I also don't really wear like sexy sexy stuff really like I'm normally quite fully clothed I normally have like a vest top on I don't have my tummy out might have a look like mm -hmm. I've got like trunks on so I'm kind of wearing what a man would wear to the seaside Pole. kind of yeah. I don't know why I said seaside the beach <laughs> um <laughs> like someone wear to the beach or whatever so maybe that's why I slip through the net I don't know but like yeah women of 100% get so much worse than me but um yeah I, but credit so, actually, is literally how that's gonna change just like i can't fight the shadow ban without you guys i right. can't get work without you guys correct but in terms yeah, of I movement totally like that's your move like i don't give a shit but but then again this goes back to exactly why there are still people in the sexy side of life especially in that old school stripper style section that are still angry because they're still not being credited and now it's just turned into like so my personal opinion just an opinion is that the Eastern European version of flow now, not when it first came out, but now I don't see any major differences between that and old school flow. They mm, look very okay. similar to me. There's a lot of, a lot of similarities. I think there's obviously more tricks in Eastern European styles, like in, in, uh, erotic flow it's still more tricks there's still a very clear execution style it's still very point based it's still very full extension like i see that but oh you you did like a pull like all the pull tricks that you're doing they've been around forever you're not doing mm. any new tricks and these tricks came from this style do you see what i'm saying like so for yeah, me the styles have mean. started blurring in the last year or two where i don't even know if we can separate between old school and new school styles really anymore because old school flow is starting to look very much like russian flow right. and heart style to me has always looked like low flow club style so i have known people who have been dancing similarly i would count like nadia and myself have very similar movement styles pre hard hard russian style that could have been catapulting into that i don't believe that, that that's where we created the style you stole it from us <laughs> like that is not what, a, what i'm saying at all but there there is a history of dynamic movement that had already existed. And at this point, now that we've all like 2015 has already happened 2015 to 2019. That's when like Eastern European styles really like just took off Olga, Olga Koda, Sasha Meow, Daria Che, like Kira Noir, like all these people just like skyrocketed in those years. And then post COVID when the internet influences in all various ways, you're getting Vera Vang, you're getting Estefania, you're getting Jazzy K, you're getting Daria Che, you're getting Sasha Mia. Like, 
you're getting all of these different styles of people who are then melting pot into you. And so now the newer generations are all just babies that look kind of the same <laughs> because there well, isn't like, really... You, were, you guys were already doing a dynamic style it's just the moves weren't the same. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you know this, these little like flow, dynamic flows and stuff they're doing. Yeah, sure. The pathways are new, but it's still a dynamic way of dancing, which already existed. So I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I am super conscious of time and I do want to quickly ask you one more Fair question enough. before we finish. Yes. So, um, <laughs> you know, you're talking about like, um, the internet is like where we get our work and stuff. I need to know because so many people tagged you on that Croatia pole camp thing. What happened? Oh my was God, this that's... like, did you post on your so, thing and say, babes, go and tag me because whatever hilarious. you do, it fucking work. That's amazing. Hilarious. Thank you. No. So actually my largest followings are Europe and Australia. Right. <laughs> and like my, and so I don't actually have a huge following in America because I'm apparently uh, scary. My performance style is scary here, which is hilarious to me. But Europe and Australia were like, are you a hoe? We want you. And for Croatia pole camp, that was actually like my personal favorite like routine that I've ever done. And I hate my videos. <laughs> I don't feel like my performances look great on video, but I do feel like if you've seen me perform in person, that's an experience that you're not going to forget, you know? And so I had uh, Marian, Nadia, and Bendy Kate were my judges. I competed again in pole theater Croatia against almost like 20 to 30 other competitors from all over Europe. And it's not the first time that that competition specifically has gotten me a spot into camps before then. And then I've also actively harassed the Croatia pole camp people being like, this was my favorite experience. I love everything that you've done. And this was like one of my best camp experiences. And I wasn't even part of the camp. Like I just came for the competition and this was amazing. Please have me. Like, uh, so I've actively harassed them for years pre COVID being like, please let me be there as a person. And then, um, <laughs> Because I literally headphones. just saw, I just saw all the comments. It was like, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. I was like, what is going on here? I was like, someone has got a petition for Jordan to be here. I'm so glad that they booked you though, because now, to be fair, they might not have done it before because of the whole COVID shit, to be fair. And I noticed fair. that I think more Americans, maybe even Australians and stuff, will start coming over more. It was it was just, we, we were sticking with EU really just because we knew that if no, the fair flight enough. got cancelled or something, it wasn't going to be loads of money. But I'm so glad to see you're going to yep. be there. I'm not going to be at that one, which is super sad because I would have loved to have been there with you. But um, are you going to pop Rude. into the UK or anything on your way home? Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, the goal is always to do a huge a tour. tour, right? Like that's, and that's the best goal. Um, but I guess we'll just see what happens. Cause I feel similarly, like this will be my first time going back overseas because I don't want to same as you. Like I don't want to screw anybody over because COVID guidelines change or we have problems with our fucking airlines all the time now here in the U S for whatever reason, we just don't feel like doing our jobs. I don't know the FAA who needs it. <laughs> um, life so southwest let's cancel all the flights at christmas like we've been having some crazy airline issues here in the u.s I, yeah, and then add covid and then add the covid restrictions and requirements and issues that could come up like i felt similarly as i'm sure all, like what you just said is it's not appropriate for me to be trying to tour this close to a post covid world because what if something happens and then we're both fucked and then in, right. in my contract you owe me money and that's not fair like because yeah. life like that's how contracts work and that's not something that i want to put on anybody else and that's not something i want to put on myself so the goal is to definitely do a big ass fucking tour book me contact my manager alanis <laughs> bolin and uh but realistically i guess we'll just see what happens <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, I am. Um, 
I've, I've loved talking to you. It's been so fun. I literally have just realised we've done an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> we know I we're know, talkers, right? though. We did say we are talkers. <laughs> we do love it. We do love a talk. God, you, it, anyone listening to this, you can imagine what we're like face to face. We just don't stop talking to each other. But yeah, no, it's been, it's been so fun having you on. I could talk to you for hours and maybe I'll get you back on. We can talk about some other, some other things for oh sure. God, but that. yeah, thank you so much. Tell everyone where they can find you, um, like social media your handles if you've got a website any of that jazz let's go um okay so mainly you can follow me on instagram because i've been kicked off of most everything else <laughs> it's just my name at jordan at jordan kensley or at jordan period kensley for my backup account every time i open instagram like i'll go to my home page and it literally says no posts and i'm like this is it this is the day that i lose my instagram and we're just here now uh hasn't happened yet surprisingly but you can only find me on instagram supposedly my tiktok is still there but i don't i can't log in so don't know what to tell you that um i think i've taken most of my youtube videos down trying to get like a muggle person job just to survive yeah just instagram and technically Instagram. I have a website, but it's, uh, it's been under construction for a few years while I try to figure out how I want to rebrand myself oh. now that I'm not blonde. Well, I'm just like, cause literally showed up to my workshop and someone was like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Jordan. And they're like, whoa, that's not what I was expecting. Yeah, yep. of course. Sorry, re- most people natural just- hair. You're a country girl now. You're, the LA girl's gone. You're in the country now. <laughs> I, I call it my Midwest mom look. <laughs> like, I was here. This is my outfit. <clears throat> Honey. It's cute. Be home for dinner. <laughs> I know. You're cute. Like, you're just, I'm gonna you're just go off to pick up the kids shopping. from school. Yeah. It's in my minivan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, oh, but yeah. Well, I, what else? <laughs> for anyone listening go and check out jordan because she is amazing and um she's just hilarious if you're not going to follow up for anything else follow her for the good times and the lulls so yeah thank you so much for coming on and i look forward to seeing you really soon i hope yes thank you for having me and yes to see you come here i'll host yeah, you I'll here try. you can I'll hang try. out with my cat <laughs> <laughs> sounds fun <laughs> see you soon babe. bye everyone bye Hey, thanks so much for listening to this podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it, as always. And make sure you're following us on whatever platform it is that you're listening to this from to make sure you can keep up with all the awesome content that is coming your way. See you in the next episode. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here. It's the Weekly Deep.